What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to Ebbs Fleet United. So here we are, the first season in the school premiere after getting promoted. We are six months in, we're halfway through the season and a little bit of, little bit to talk about before we go into the actual league table and transfers and things like that. So first thing I want to point out is that we are now a professional football team as you can see on the left. Now this is really really beneficial because typically what you find is you don't turn professional until you enter into League 2 unless of course you have big money backing or something like that. Typically you won't enter professional football until you enter the Football League and that is a real disadvantage because that means you have to, have to offer all your players new contracts, typically they ask for a lot more so you find yourself unable to afford things and afford players so in the end half your squad might be on semi-pro contracts, half your team's professional and then you find some players of course those on semi-pros aren't training full time so they're really unfit and it just leads to a lot of complications and a lot of difficult season in League 2 as you try and get your team up to the standard of professional football. But for me, by getting it now, it means I actually get an advantage for this league and I'll be prepared whenever we do get into League 2 that all my players, or all the key players anyway, should be on full-time contracts or, the, or whatever. I should have all the players on full-time contracts anyway. But yeah, so getting it now, I don't see it as a disadvantage. If anything, it's a massive advantage because uh, despite the fact I haven't offered everyone full-time contracts yet, I've still... Like I say, those who are key players or those youngsters who I need to develop, like Richard Levitt, they've all been given free uh, full-time full contracts, not free contracts, full-time contracts, and they're all training seven days a week, which gives me advantage against pretty much the majority of the rest of the league. Okay, guys, so before we go into the league table, I just want to quickly you know, prepare you as well. Media prediction-wise, we were expected to finish sixth at the end of the season. And currently, so far in the league table, we find ourselves sitting very comfortably in third place. So... Meeting expectations of what surrounding the media, so that's pretty good. I mean, we're in the playoffs, and I did say going into that this season, I feel the squad was good enough, or you know, could have been good enough to get back to back promotions. And coming out of the transfer window, I say if we don't get promotion, there's something really wrong with us because some of the signings we've made are absolutely amazing for the level of football. And realistically, if we could get some of the results grinded out because I think we've been cheated out of a lot of games. Our six defeats, I don't think, should be six defeats. If we could change that around, we should win the league. If not, get playoffs. And then even if not, we're getting the playoffs, I feel we can beat the teams around us. So we're doing pretty, we're doing well so far. Six defeats, though, that's a bit worrying. But 46 goals for, scored, 27 against. Really good record all around there for goals scored and against. Pretty high in the league. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been going good. It's been another good season, another nice easy season, which is of course what I want to see. Like I said, the transfers have helped us get there massively, so we're going to go to the transfers. So we'll start at the out, so first guy, uh, first people we just let leave, of course you already know about James Shea from last time, but the, all these guys we let leave, including Tom Williams, who was a good enough player for us for a season. Uh, ben May, who when I came in was meant to be the star striker, ended up just not even playing, so he ended up leaving Dominic Green in a good season with us and left, and apart from that, it was just all people that weren't good enough at the level we were already at, or just weren't, or I, I thought, you know, they probably won't make the step up, and if they do make the step up, will they really be worth it? And I just thought, no. So all them people left, quite a long list of people left on freeze, including uh, this guy as well. We loaned out a few youngsters as well, we loaned out six people, who are just people, I don't think they'll ever really make it here, but it's good to just get them out on loan, see if they can get football, maybe sell them on one day. And we also sold one player, which is Preston Edwards. I did say I'd sell this guy in a heartbeat. And we've actually signed two new goalkeepers this season, in addition to Taylor we already signed. So we have three keepers at the side, and the goalkeeper position I'm not quite happy with. But Preston Edwards, I said I'd sell in a heartbeat, and I saw I saw a guy on the free transfer who I signed. I'll talk about him when he comes along. And because I saw him, I thought, yep, that's Preston Edwards out of the team. He's going now. And so 20k, Preston Edwards went to Burnley at the Championship. A quite a drastic step up, step up really, but uh, yeah, that, it was a good enough fee to pick up for me. I maybe could have got more, but at the end of the day, I just wanted him out and I wanted his wage filled up. It wasn't about picking up a good fee, it was about getting him off the wage budget. Anyway, to the ends. Uh, Mike Taylor, uh, you already know about Vienna and Alex Smith, you already know about, including Andy Frompton. But the first guy we you don't know about is the beast himself, Akin Fenwa. Yes, we signed Akin Fenwa, 32 years of age. He's still got incredible stats. He shouldn't be in a non-league level of football. That is for sure. He should definitely be in the football league still. So for him to step down as well from the level he was at to this level is 
quite incredible. He's one of the only two people on £1,000 a week, so it shows that I've had to spend quite a bit to get Akin Fenwa here. But when you look at his stats, he's a, apparently a decent League 2 player already, or currently. But also, when you consider the fact he came from League 1 to step all the way down to the school, to school Prem, that's quite a lot to ask for a player. Like I say, typically, if anything, you'd see them drop down the league. So for him to drop down two leagues, and the way he's been playing, 18 goals in 23 games, including 10 assists. So overall, he's created 28 goals in 23 games. I don't think I can really ask for more here for him. A really good player. I hope his stats hold up to the end of the season. Hopefully, he'll still be here as well next season if we somehow get promoted, or even if we don't get promoted. If we're still in this division, it'd be great to have him because he's been absolutely tearing it up and he's been an, an amazing target man up front for us. Really, really good. Next guy we've got free transfer, Sim Holmes. This guy's a youngster, 17 years of age, regen. And I'm really surprised Bromley let him leave. He only made nine appearances as well last season for Bromley. And for us, he's made 15 so far, but he's only started three games because. He's a youngster who's competing in a position where there's a lot of talent, so he's sort of struggling to get in the team. But according to reports, he's got Premier League potential. Yes, we found another regen with Premier League potential. This guy looks incredible, and I'm really interested to see how he'll do. Apparently, he's a leading school Prem player already. Again, I'm not sure how true that is, but the fact is he's competing with Vienna. He's sort of competing with Levitt on occasions as well. It's just it's hard to find him a place in the team, so more times than not, he's on the bench offering a backup role to the left wing and to the centre attacking mids. But he plays the same positions as Levitt. Really young, good potential. Hopefully he'll be here for a long time to come, and hopefully we'll get him to that Premier League potential one day. Next signing, Alan Smith. Yes, the Alan Smith, the Leeds, Manchester United and Newcastle player. We managed to sign this guy. Again, he had to step down from League One, from MK Dons, but he never really played for them, unlike Akin Fenwa. But still, to have him step down from such a, a, a high league down to this one is a really good thing. Uh, currently, well, he was playing centre mid for us, but because he has a clause, you can see down here, a one-year extension after 15 league games, I've decided now he's reached 14 league games, I don't think he'll be good enough to last another year. According to reports, he's good enough for this level, but he's quite injury-prone. I don't know how much I can trust him. I doubt his stats will hold up for another year. Like I said, we're looking like we're on the verge of getting a promotion, maybe. So I don't really think this guy would be good enough for League 2. So because of that, because of all them reasons, he won't be playing another game for us this season. He's reached his 14-game limit, basically. But yeah, that's Alan Smith on £1,000 a week. So it's a real shame that they you know that clause came in. I didn't think I'd play him as much as I did, but in the end, I, I've sort of had to. <sighs> but yeah, real shame. Real shame. I know it's a good signing to have while I had him, pretty much. I, I look to try and get rid of him in January if I can, because £1,000 a week like I said, is a lot for the club. Considering we're only allowed 17 You know, he's, it's quite a big bit of money. Next guy, another youngster. Bursant Selina, I believe his name is, or Kalina. I'm going to say Selina, because that's how I saw it when I first read it. Is he part Italian? Maybe no, he's just complete Norwegian. Uh, but anyway, he is a really young player, and he looks quite incredible as well. He looks like he could be a good player. Only 18, not got incredible stats on him currently. Apart from his finishing, a little bit of pace and agility, not really got much else going for him. But he's come from Man City. According to reports, he can become a good championship player. So because of that, he is competing with West on that right attack and mid-roll. And again, he sort of struggled to get to the first team. A bit like Holmes, because of the quality of player that is sort of around in that in them positions it's hard for these youngsters with good potential to get in because i sort of go oh you know i'll, I'll play i'll play him a few times i'll maybe consider this guy maybe go okay i'll play him when west's not having a good game or when west is looking a bit tired so but because we've turned professional because i've offered professional deals to west and things like that there's no room for him <laughs> it's quite literally go i can't sort of squeeze you in anywhere there's no position there. there's no position there again he sort of gets on the bench and because he can play up front that helps him because i mean i can i sort of go after the last 10 I'll, I'll shove him up front but it's sort of hard to find this guy in position to play right now in the team but with that potential like that and with stats like he's got you know with reports like he's got expect a big future from this guy and he'll definitely be here for a few years to come the next guy we got in was neil taylor he's going to be our backup right back for the season I couldn't find anyone better than Purchase, which is a shame. So in the end, I just went for a, a youngster, not asking for a lot of week, to sort of just cover that right back role because we didn't really have a backup right back. And this guy will do. I mean, not got great stats really anywhere, but he's only featured once all season, and it was in the cup. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't expect him to feature too much more. Next guy is another guy I'm really happy with, another youngster, another good signing, I believe, and it's Sean Goss. Some Manchester United fans may know him. I don't know how much people, you know, care about reserves and use at United. But former Manchester United youth player, 
19 years of age, this guy's got some really good start-off stats, I'd say. 19 passing especially, technique as well is decent. The fact that he's got a bit of finishing a first touch mean, obviously, going forward, he can offer a threat quite dangerously. Uh, but only 19, again, the report is what really attracted me. Apparently a League 2 player already, leading championship potential, if that can come true. You know, we've got Levitt, who apparently is a Premier League potential. We've got Goss, who is apparently championship potential. We'd have championship players sort of left, right and centre everywhere in the club in potential-wise. And that's just really good because it would mean, hopefully in the future, we won't be having to sign too many players that we've had to do this season and sort of last season as well. But really good player. He's played really well for me as well so far. 20 appearances, only 2 assists. But the average match rating is really good. So I don't care if he's not that man who you know delivers that final ball. But if he's somehow linking up the play, finding that guy who can get the assist maybe from the wing or whatever, I'm more than happy with that. And he's, he's showing it by his average rating. So happy with Goss. Next guy's Aloni from Livingston. Bonetto, 35 years of age. We needed a backup on the left. And we're only pay we're even not paying any of this guy's wages. And even if we were, it would only be um forty five pounds a week, is it or something? What was he on? Uh ninety no forty five pounds a week during the loan. So yeah, we are paying forty five, we're paying half of his wages. I more than happily pay I would more than happily pay forty five pounds a week for a backup player. I mean that's nothing really, if you think about it. So yeah, it's a good player to have. A little bit of experience playing from Serie A and Serie B and things like that, so yeah, overall not a bad backup player. And he's played decently when I've called upon him as well. So that's always nice to have. You know, he's not got much pace or anything. But mentally, obviously, he's using his uh, attributes like positioning and things to good use. So that way the pace doesn't become a factor. So yeah, I'm happy with that loan. And it's worked out really well. Now these last two signings. These are the two goalkeepers I was speaking about when I was talking about Preston Edwards. Uh, now the first one was why I actually sold Preston Edwards. As you can see, there's... Buying and selling of the two was a few days apart just because of a uh, work permit for the player actually signed in the end. But Lawrence Vigarou, I believe his name is, Vigarux, Vigarou, I think, maybe French descent, I don't know, so that's why I see it anyway. 21 years of age, Chilean player, and he's got really nice stats on him. And the fact that he's 21, again, to me, says he can grow, he'll develop into a good player. But the performances have been pretty, uh, you know, maybe I'm asking for too much, but... I just haven't really seen anything for him. Okay, he's kept four clean sheets, but in 16 games, is four clean sheets really enough when really we're, we're third in the table? And I'd say no. So in the end, I've had to bring in another keeper, who of course I'll show you in a second. But this guy, according to stats, should be a leading lead two goalkeeper with championship potential. So the fact that he's struggling in this league is really quite worrying because what will he do in the higher leagues where maybe our defence won't be able... You know, maybe I won't be able to bring in new defenders this season or whatever. To So next year, he'll be even more exposed. Then I'll be in real deep trouble, whereas he'll really be exposed for not a great keeper. So I'm really worried about this guy. Of course, I want to play him, and of course, I want to develop him. But if he's not going to be putting in good performances, I'm going to have to try and get rid of this guy quickly. Of course, I've still got time. Obviously, it won't be happening in January. I'll make that decision come the end of the season. But still, real shame that this guy hasn't worked out so far. But hopefully, it's maybe just adapting to a new team or something and when I put him back in again he'll play a little bit better but the last guy we signed was Carlo Nash a few people may know him he's the backup keeper pretty much everywhere nowadays he's been at Stoke as backup he's been at New Norwich's backup Everton Wigan all backup roles he's pretty much the backup player I think it's partly because he's English and it just helps with the registration thing that they have an English man already ticked off on the thing but yeah 41 years of age and he's Still got good stats. Again, age to me isn't a big factor, isn't a big deciding point when I'm going to sign a player. So the fact that this guy has got the stats that he's got, I'm really happy with. And hopefully, you know, by, by the performance he's put in so far after just three games, they've been alright. I mean, not great again, but they've been alright. And according to reports, he is a League One player. So, um, again, it's been pretty good that we can get him down here. But we need to see performances now. And we need to see him sort of step up because if not I'm sort of in a weird situation where Taylor again hasn't put in good performances the reason I had to sign a new goalkeeper actually these him Lawrence Vigarou the fact I had to sign him was because Taylor was just being smashed all over the pitch four games ten goals conceded I couldn't be having that all season long so I had to bring in a new goalkeeper and that's a partly again why the reason Preston had to go because I just didn't see the point of having three keepers now I've got three keepers I'm in an even weirder situation that I don't like to be in I normally only have two senior goalkeepers and a youth player can do as a third choice so that's a little bit worrying there. But the transfers overall, I'm pretty pleased with. Everywhere but the goalkeeping positions, I think, are good signings. 
Uh, we'll have a look at Alex Smith, how he's done so far, I guess. He's done all right. He's doing pretty well, uh, taking the step up to first-team football really well, even if it is in the non-league level. Uh, Vienna stepping up now to a new level was, again, just slipped in perfectly to it. 7.11 average match rating. Sort of makes me wonder why Luton didn't play him anyway, because clearly he's cut out for it. And Frampton so far was given a vice-captain role, and he's uh, he's been incredible this year. As I expected as well, going into the season, he's exactly performed up to the level I expected of him. So we're going to some staff, because I, I said I wanted to bring in, I wanted to talk about staff updates when I could. So the first guy I brought in was Lee Furlong as a, as a scout. Pretty good judging player's ability and potential. Elsewhere we brought in Adam Gif Griffin as a coach, if he wants to load. Not the best coach, I admit, but he's 30, he's studying for an a, a Continental A license, so he's got a potential to grow as a coach, which isn't a bad thing to have, because typically if your coaches can grow, that's just a big plus, really. <laughs> that's just a, an overall gain. Not got great determination, no work, uh, motivation or level of discipline, so overall not, not an incredible coach. And then we decided to sort of focus on a bit on the youth. I decided to bring an under-18s coach in. I think this was the first time I was allowed one. So we ended up getting Keith Vaughan. Again, he's a pretty young coach, so he'll develop. But overall, a pretty a decent coach for the under-18s level. And we brought in Michael Dobson as the under-21s manager. Where's he used to play? I imagine he was a player. Oh, Walsall. Hmm, that's strange. He'd just fade out of football. But yeah, we'll bring in Michael Dobson as our under-21 manager. Not a bad coach either. So as the staff changes and the transfers... Let's jump into the fixtures. So, to start off the season, we lost 3-2 to Nunnawarton. Yes, a disappointing way to start off the season. But, if you look at the match stats, if anything, a draw would have been unfair, let alone a win for Nunnawarton. Real poor way as well. 93rd minute equaliser. And actually throwing away a 2-1 advantage after coming back from 1-0 behind is just not really acceptable. But still, poor defeat to take. Really poor. But after that, we did finally win our first game after two. You know, we finally won one. Like a 2 1 victory in the end. Akin Fenn was scoring his two goals for us, including an 83rd minute penalty, which won the game. So, a, a fight, we got a win. We started off, our, our, well, I thought we started our season after a bit of a blip. But then we went on two defeats on a bounce. And yet again, these were games that really we probably shouldn't have lost. Against Chester, evenly fought match. Did, didn't do enough in the end of the day going forward to win the game. We left it a little bit too late to sort of show, turn up and think, oh yeah, wait, hang on, we need to score a few goals. So, lost that game. I thought that could have easily been a draw. If anything, it, we deserved a draw. And then Forest Green, we lost 3-1. And again, evenly fought match. It was just defensively, we weren't good. Which is why, again, partly why I wanted to bring a new goalkeeper in. Because I felt, well, you know, what, the, the, the goalkeeper's going to have a few shots at him, yes. But surely he's got to be saving a few of these. I mean, come on. So yeah, lost two, lost three of our first four games, which wasn't ideal. But then, then finally, our season started properly. 2-0 win against Wellington. 2-1 win against Alfreton. We beat Macclesfield 4-0 with a Levitt double. Then we beat Tamworth 4-1 with an Akin Fenwa double. As you see, we finally swapped the keeper, actually, at these games. So it shows how the defence sort of changed up without Taylor in goal. Beat Braintree 1-0, Woking 1-0, Salisbury we lost 2-1. That was another poor game. We should have won that game, if anything. Got a draw. Again, it's evenly four matches. But we're not getting results. We beat recently relegated AFC Wimbledon 2-1. Akin Fenwa getting a double on that occasion. Wrexham smashed them 4-1. Another double for Akin Fenwa. It shows how good Akin Fenwa has been this season. Just can't stop scoring. FC Halifax drew 1-1-2. Not a bad, not a bad draw in the end. Grimsby beat them 3-1. Holmes got his first goal for the club in the injury time. Lost to Bath 1-0. This was poor. Bath coming up with us, of course. Sh should have done better against them. Really should have. Again, another game probably should have been a draw, though. Really, I'd say, out of all the defeats, we shouldn't, there shouldn't be any, really. There's no excuse. We've played well enough in all of them to at least get a point. It's just been poor defending and not really enough going forward. So pretty a couple of poor results. Then we beat another recently relegated team, Exeter though, 4-1. This time, Akinfen were picking up his first hat-trick for the club. So, really dominating a lot of good teams around us. FA Cup fourth round turned up, though. And playing Wellington early on in the season, I was confident that we were going to go in there and just pick up an easy win. Progress through to the FA Cup first round proper. But, nope. Welling decided they wanted to put up a fight. So, in the end, an 89th minute equaliser for us gave us 
a, a, a replay. So that, that showed that Welling weren't actually there to just be brushed past by us. They actually were going to put up a fight. And then in the replay, they actually beat us in the 118th minute. And again, another evenly fought match again that we probably didn't deserve to win. But at the end of the day, nothing could separate us after two games. And one of us were always going to leave disappointed. It was a shame it had to be us because Welling did put up a good fight. And I wonder, how did they do in the FA Cup? I didn't even bother checking. <laughs> I was just like, screw the FA Cup. Oh, they lost to Newport County. I thought we could have beaten them. Ugh. Screw you, Welling. Oh, well, out of the FA Cup. That, that was a shame. Following that, though, we lost 1-0 to Bar Barnet. I want to say Barton. We lost 1-0 to Barnet. This is quite a poor result at the end. Uh, because, of course, they're top of the table. So, really, do we want to be losing to, this, losing to the team? No. And especially when we get a man sent off. We had about four shots all game, I think. Yeah, four shots all game, two on target. We just offered nothing going forward. And, the end, and you know, come the end result, come the end of the day, if, if you're going to offer nothing going forward, if you're going to pose no threat to the opposition, you're going to most more than likely lose because you know you know where you're going to score you have to score to win a game you have to score to get all three points and if you can't do that there you go you lose one nil to a team that really you could have got a draw against and of course the sending off doesn't help I'm going to point that out drew cambridge 1-1 after that pretty decent draw cambridge are up there fighting with us in the playoffs so end result you know after three games without a win decent draw to pick up and we finally got back onto winning ways, beating Hereford 3-1 with Akin Fenwell, Vienna and Frampton all getting on the score sheets before 1-1 draws to Aldershot, Altrigham, beating them 2-0, drawing to Gateshead and then beating Altrigham yet again in the FA Trophy first round 3-2. So, overall, you know, no bad run actually, if we want to point that out. Last season, we were approaching a pretty poor spell around this time, as you see in the November, December time, we went on a poor spell of games where we just didn't pick up a win. But it's not happened so far, so I mean that's a positive. Okay, we didn't win four games in a row here, but at least we, you know, at least we two of them were the cup games. So in the end, that didn't really affect our league form too much. So yeah, I'm I'm really confident that we can do well in this. We've got the FA Trophy still to to focus on a little bit. I feel that's a competition we could win, and I wouldn't mind winning that either. We won it last time in 2008, so the club have a history in this cup competition. So it'd be good to go for that. But really, league is main focus. Football league, football, of course. Is the goal. Back-to-back -back promotions would be incredible. And the way some of the players have been playing, if we go on stats and I'll show you, Akin Fenwa, 10 assists, a drawn highest. Goals, Akin Fenwa is top. Average ratings will go on the league and go on that. Akin Fenwa is up there. Viana, Levitt, West, Mambo, Frampton, Smith, Goss. All these people are playing really well in the league for us. And it's reflecting. And we've actually got so many people up there, actually. Probably one of the highest above seven. Maybe Gateshead. I've seen Gateshead a few times. But a Forest Green occasionally. But yeah, we do, we're doing really well. And the players are playing well. We just need to get that goalkeeper position. We need to get that cemented. We need to get that solid. And I think the whole squad then would benefit. And of course, I'd still really want a right back. That would be great. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is it. I think this is all I can really talk about. I'll have a look at maybe some goals. Vienna's got nine. West has got eight so far in the league. Assist wise, West, Levitt, Vienna. I can firm with a front four exactly what you'd need. Tactic wise, we're still the same. Um, if he wants to load up, tactic wise, yeah, you go. We're still the same. Sl some changes here and there, you know, to player roles and things like that, as you would expect. But still, everything's pretty basic, pretty standard. I don't really expect too many hectic changes soon either, because really, it's working. You know, I don't fix something that ain't broken. But yeah. This is going to be it for now, guys. I don't really think there's anything else I want to talk about. Nothing's happened off the field in terms of, like, facility-wise or anything. So, yeah. Financial, I think we'll look at the finances to actually turn this one off. As you see, we're sort of struggling paying all the new wage budget increases. We can't really sustain ourselves. So, that's it's a little bit of a worry. But, hopefully, if we get Football League Football this year, going into next season, the additional money that sort of trickles down from the Premier League into the Football League will just help us a little bit more. And plus maybe a little bit of TV money, you know, a little bit of FA Cup money because we enter a bit later, a little bit of maybe League Cup money if we go on a run. You know, there are all these cup competitions in the Football League just to sort of help give a little bit of money to, to teams. So yeah, if we could maybe see a little bit of benefit for that. But of course, we have to get promoted first. So this will be it for now, guys. Next time we get back will be the end of season update. Uh, so until then, peace out.